When I first started out in Seven Days to Die, I died pretty quickly and pretty often, for a while. But 2000 hours later, I can play Insane Nightmare with my eyes closed, so I decided to make a list of 10 things that would have really helped me out in my first few hours of playing the game. If you enjoyed today's video or learn something new, consider hitting that like button and let's get into 10 things I wish I knew when starting out in 7 Days to Die. The first thing is to get a vehicle as soon as possible. Walking is an absolute chore in this game. It's slow and let's be real, you're really going to be sprinting everywhere which is going to waste your food and water. There are 5 vehicles in 7 Days to Die. The bicycle, the mini bike, the motorcycle, the 4x4 and the gyrocopter. Those last two are a bit unrealistic in the first week though, but you can actually get a free bicycle by completing 7 quests at a trader. You can get good enough to the point where you can get this done by the middle of day 2, or if you're willing to cheat a little bit, by the middle of day 1. But don't worry if you take longer, it's all a learning process. The bicycle moves faster than you, isn't affected by encumbrance and armour weight, and it has an extra 9 inventory slots. This will help you get around efficiently and carry more. Once you're ready, you can move on to the mini bike or the motorcycle. The motorcycle is quite easy to craft materials wise and it has 35 inventory slots and moves much faster than a bicycle or a mini bike. Once I have my bicycle, a gun and a base set up, I set all attention to getting a motorcycle as soon as possible. And I'd honestly advise you do the same. Number 2 is to watch out for the zombie animals. I can't remember, but I'd be willing to bet money my first death in this game came at the hands of a zombie dog. They're fast, they're small, and they deal the same damage as everything else. Failing that, a vulture would be my next guess. Some advice for zombie dogs is that most of them will actually be telegraphed in the level design. If you're walking around and you see a dog kennel or a cage, that's the devs telling you they put a zombie dog somewhere nearby, and you should probably leave that area if you're not equipped to handle it yet. As for vultures, it's harder to tell when they're around. But Generally speaking, if a location has you going onto a roof, there's probably a vulture there. If you find a zombie bear, just leave. It has like 2000 health and does about 4 times as much damage as everything else. Get some contact grenades or a really good gun before you go messing with zombie bears. Number 3. Medicine is actually extremely easy to mass produce. Around about day 14 I like to invest 2 skill points, one into living off the land for double crop harvests, and one into physician so that I can craft first aid bandages. Then I go off into the desert and spend a whole day gathering aloe. Aloe only spawns in the desert and it looks like this. 4 aloe can be crafted into aloe cream, and one aloe cream can be combined with cloth to make a first aid bandage, which restores about 30 health, although you can upgrade your physician to get them to restore about 50. This is an extremely cheap way to keep your health bar up. Do this little cycle once and you'll probably have enough first aid bandages to carry you right through to the late game, at which point you'll have stockpiles of even more first aid bandages, first aid kits, and other healing items like painkillers. Number 4. Vending machines are the key to life. They sell food and water extremely cheaply, which is really helpful when starting out. And they're also the only source of the game's buff candies, like skull crushers which boost melee damage by 50%, or the oh shit drops which eliminate fall damage. To find vending machines, you can find one in every trader, and the vending machines reset every day. And you might even want to go as far as to mark any functioning vending machines you find out in the wild on your map, so you can check them again later. You can really ignore farming and hunting altogether if you keep on top of vending machines. Number 5 is how to get forged iron. Forged iron is arguably one of the biggest early game resource barriers you'll encounter, but it's actually pretty easy to get some if you know how. You have three main options for getting it. Number one is to take advanced engineering, build yourself a forge, and smelt scrap iron and clay into the forge, and then craft that into forged iron. Number two is to find a wrench, most commonly found in hardware store loot, as well as sinks and cars, and then you'll want to wrench down all those broken crafting stations you find in the world like workbenches which give 10, forged iron, or cement mixers which give you some as well. The third way is to check the resource tab at the trader. They often have 30 to 50 for sale and it's not that expensive. There is also the fourth option of waiting for the forged iron to just spawn as loot, but that's pretty unreliable. With that, you should be able to get to the next tech tier quite easily early on in the game, which brings us to number six. Number six is all about forged steel. Forged steel is another big tech barrier that you'll need to cross to make motorcycles, advanced weapons, and weapon mods, as well as just being a crafting material used in block upgrades. In order to get forged steel, you basically have the same three options as forged iron. You can get a crucible for your forge, which lets you make forged steel out of iron and clay. To get a crucible, you can loot one later in the game, craft one using the schematic, which is a rare tool drop, or craft one using advanced engineering, rank 5. 
or you can buy one from Trader's Secret Stashes if you get your better barter up to rank 4 or 5. I prefer that last one because I get better barter for a lot of other useful stuff anyway. But another route for smaller amounts of forged steel is to take your wrench and scrap up all the street lights and power box thingies, as well as broken vending machines which will all give you a few steel. This is more of an early game source of small amounts of steel so you can craft things like motorcycles and weapons and isn't a great way to get your base up to steel level. You'll want to get yourself a forge and a crucible for that. And of course another option is to just buy it from the trader, but it is pretty expensive and should probably be your last resort. Number 7 isn't necessarily something I wish I knew when I first started out, but more something I wish I knew when I came back to the game and that is how to open locked containers. You see back in my day we had to open containers with our pickaxes and sledgehammers, that's all we had, but you kids these days have some slightly less time consuming methods. We now have lock picking, if you have a lock pick in your inventory you can hold E on a locked container and you can press to unlock, this will start a mini game where the timer goes down to zero and there's a chance for the pick to break and you'll have to use another one. There are also timed charges which can be crafted after you read rank 3 of the Great Heist skill book which do bonus damage against locked containers although you will need a couple of these for the higher level containers. And there is also shotgun breaching rounds which are reasonably fast at opening containers, but the slugs are a bit costly to make. Failing all that though, you can always fall back on the auger, the universal lockpick. Number 8. Explosives. Use more of them. Take demolitions rank 1, make pipe bombs, make a million more pipe bombs, congratulations you have won every horde night in the game from now until the day counter breaks. You can also buy contact grenades very cheaply at the traders, and these are the ultimate trump card when clearing out locations. If you wake everyone inside up, use a grenade. If you wake everyone outside up, use a grenade. The grenades just win. Failing that, molotovs are a good substitute, just keep some water on you and drink it if you set yourself on fire. Number 9 is that looting is a bit pointless early on. The loot you find is based off of a stat called Loot Stage, which I made a whole video about which is linked in the description. Early on, it's really not worth trying to go into big scary POIs for loot because you'll still just get slightly better loot than you would find from a random burned down house. You'll get better loot if you go into harder biomes like the wasteland and do harder POIs like the factories, but it's a small modifier early on because it's based on your level. Looting is a pretty inefficient progression method early on. In fact, I don't even go out looting for guns and gear until I hit level 80 and then I go to tier 5 POIs in the wasteland which gives you the best chance to get tech 3 level 6 gear. Otherwise there are just faster ways to progress, like number 10. Number 10 is to do more questing and trading. Quests are amazing for getting good gear, again I did a whole video on the exact rewards which you may be interested in, but the short of it is this. You'll start getting tier 1 guns for doing tier 2 clear jobs. This can happen as early as day 3. In order to start looting tier 1 guns, you'll have to get to about level 20 and go to the wasteland. That's going to take at least 5-6 to six days and you're still going to be looting in the wasteland. Instead, you can do quests which are specifically designed to be at your current progression level and which will give you much better rewards than looting will in 90% of the time. You'll also get completion bonuses every 7 of your highest tier quests, like the bicycle at tier 1, the nail gun or maybe a workbench at tier 2, the motorcycle parts or good guns at tier 3, the 4x4 parts at tier 4, or the legendary weapons and the stacks of steel blocks at tier 5. Trust me, if you are not being paid to clear a location in this game, you're wasting your time. Loot is always trash until way later in the game. But there is also trading which is a really great way to get endgame items like crucibles and drones early on, if you grab better barter from the intellect tree. Not much to really say on trading except do as much as you can and you'll have great gear long before looting and crafting would ever give it to you. So that was 10 things I wish I knew when I first started in 7 days to die. Do you have any tips like this for new players? If so, leave them down below. As always consider subscribing if you haven't already and if you really want to support me, you can help me out over on Patreon. If you want to see that loot guide or that questing guide, they should be on screen now. Thank you to my channel members and patrons for making these videos possible and thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.